This is a video I didn't want to make, but the members of the Magenta Otter tribe demanded it, so I'm doing it anyway. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Dara, and I'm an American who lives in Texas for about seven months of the year, and the rest of the year I live in England with my dual citizen husband. We kind of spend summers in Britain and winters in Texas. So the topic of today's video is Americanisms that Britons hate. And this topic was suggested to me by one loyal subscriber who has brought up several times a phrase he can't stand <laughs> when Americans say it. So I thought, oh, this will be fun. I'll do a video about, you know, things Americans say that British people dislike. So I thought I'll just do a little community post and ask my many British subscribers, because most of my subscribers are British, what other things they are bugged by that Americans say. And oh boy, did I get a response. So normally when I do a community post, I'll get five or 10 responses. This time I got 200. Whoo, looks like I hit a nerve. And a few of the comments were very kind, and many of the comments were just lighthearted and humorous, but a lot of them kind of went off into the nasty anti-American zone. And that's not a place I like to live in the nasty anti-American zone. So that's why I was hesitant to film this video. But I had so much material and so much feedback, I thought, nope, I'm going to figure out a way to encapsulate what I learned from this and hopefully have a discussion in a lighthearted and fun-loving way that I try to do most of my videos on this channel. I have seen a few other videos on YouTube recently by big channels that I enjoy watching talking about how Europeans or Britons disapprove of Americans and I've watched those videos and it's a little bit sad to me so I don't want to go into that negative place, but I do think it's interesting to talk about how we perceive each other and interesting to see how someone perceives things you say and do all the time in a different way. It doesn't mean we have to change them and hopefully it doesn't mean we have to hate people that do things differently than we do because we're all different. So without disrespecting Americans, I would like to talk about the feedback I received and the things I've heard grouped into six different sections. The last one that I'll do is about words that are just different on the two continents. And I'm not going to go through all the words that are different or this would be a five hour video. So I'm just going to highlight a few. But the first of the six sections is pronunciation of words in a way Americans do that Britons just don't like. Honestly, I think this is kind of a personal preference type thing. There are going to be things that grate people's gears or rip people's knitting. Uh, those are both British <laughs> sayings that I think what bugs one person isn't necessarily going to bug another. But let's face it, one common problem we have is place names. So many British place names are just hard to pronounce for Americans. And in fact, a few years ago, I did a video with Ian about pronouncing British place names where I kind of tried to share some of my learning over 20, 30 years of going to Britain. And I did a little game with Ian to give him a challenge of, can he pronounce all of these British place names as a Briton who has mostly grown up in the States? So that was a fun video. I'll link it in the description if you wanna check that out. But seriously, it is just impossible to correctly pronounce all British place names in a way that Britons approve of who live in the place where you're visiting. And as someone who does travel vlogs, this is a huge occupational hazard for me. So <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is I went to Clovelly in Devon. Wonderful place to visit, loved going there. Shot the whole video saying the name Clovelly wrong, which then was a bummer because <laughs> I had this footage I had to edit and publish knowing I said the name wrong, but Oh well, what are you gonna do? I just made a joke about it and went on with it because I love visiting there and I wanted to share the vlog of what we saw and all the cute cats. So 
I'll also link that in the description if you're interested in Clovelly because it's a pretty cool place. But what I've learned after four years of doing travel vlogs and publishing them is I try every time I go to a place to walk up to the ticket counter and say, how do you pronounce this place that we're at? <laughs> and have them tell me and then that's what I go with. But even when I hear locals pronounce it, Apparently, I'm still gonna mess it up because I thought I was saying Arundel Castle correctly, but I still got feedback in the comment section that I'd done that one wrong. So in addition to place names, what else bugs Britons? What else makes them grumble? Must grumble, I'm wearing my must grumble shirt for the first time in a video. Um, if you want your own must grumble shirt, check out my merch link in the description, along with some other fun British sayings like Matt is a box of frogs. But another category, of things that Americans say in a way Britons don't love is herbs. We say herbs instead of herbs. And then when you get to those specific herbs, we say those in a way that grates people's gears like basil instead of basil, oregano instead of oregano, maybe even rosemary instead of rosemary. I don't know. You tell me, have you ever noticed how someone says rosemary is American? And then there's all kinds of brand names. My friends, the Brit girls, did a video about brand names that Americans and Britons say differently. So there's a whole bunch of them. I'll link their video in the description. One that came up in our discussion on that community post was Jaguar, because Britons say Jaguar. Now, it is a British brand. That car company originated in Britain, so I guess we'll give it to you, but yeah, I would never say Jaguar <laughs> if I just saw that. It more seems like guar gum. I think that's an ingredient in ice cream. <laughs> um, I think that's just how we say the last half of that word is guar. So that's why it's Jaguar, but I get it. I'll try and say Jaguar when I am in Britain. But as always, I reserve the right to say things the American way when I'm in the US. Then there's another thing that I became sensitive to after probably my first two or three videos that I filmed on the channel. Sitting here on the gray couch in front of the gray wall four years ago, I filmed a few videos and they were all about pronunciation, language, word differences between Britain and the US. And as I was <laughs> introducing my channel, Magenta Otter Travels, I learned quickly reading the comments that Americans say their T's like D's. So in the same way that we say water so differently than English people, pretty much take any word that has a T in the middle of it, whether it's the name Katie or the word better or butter, or most relevant, the word otter, we say it better, butter, otter. And so I thought, if I don't want to be magenta otter travels, <laughs> I better say those T's. So I'm magenta otter travels. So it's just a habit now that I've picked up when I'm filming for my channel and specifically when I'm filming in Britain that I try to say Britain instead of Britain. Pronounce those T's. One interesting thing to note is that some American pronunciations of things are infiltrating Britain because the younger generations of British people who are growing up consuming a lot of American media, social media, TV shows, movies, etc. certain words are being pronounced by those younger people in an American way. In fact, I was just watching a rom-com a couple days ago that was set in Britain, had a British guy as a lead role, but it was a modern movie, it was just filmed last year. And he said schedule instead of schedule. So I think that's one of the words that is creeping in that older British people still say schedule and some people are saying schedule. And I've heard from some Britons that they do not like this infiltration. So let me know your thoughts if you're British. Are you okay with schedule? What about privacy or harassment? Do you disapprove of British people starting to say those words the American way. Okay, section number two is habits or behaviors. 
Now, this is something where it's not really just what we say as Americans, it's habits that we have, things that we routinely say and do that some British people really take issue with. And the biggest thing that came up was the habit of saying, have a nice day. So let's say you're at a shop, you buy something, you're checking out at the till and you're getting ready to leave and you say to the cashier, have a nice day. Boy, that bugs a lot of British people because they think it's insincere. And I have thought about this a lot because when I am here in the States, I do that pretty much every single dang time. <laughs> I'm at a store or I buy something from someone and leave, restaurant, whatever. I say have a nice day all the time. And you know what? I mean it. I mean, I'm the crazy chick that at the end of every video says do something good in the world today. Yes, I'm just a hopeless, optimist, positive, Pollyanna kind of person. So when I say that, I do feel for that cashier who's standing there on her feet. My feet would be killing me if I had to stand all day. So I feel bad for that person who's having to stand there on their feet all day and make change and interact with people, some of whom are grumpy or rude or selfish. So I say have a nice day and I really mean it. So I'm not uh, accepting that feedback. I don't think we Americans should stop saying have a nice day. Now, if you are someone who works at a shop and you are truly a grumpy, grumbly kind of person and you don't think that person should have a nice day, in fact, you wish they would take a long walk off a short pier, then don't say it. And if you're gonna say it, don't say it insincerely, like have a nice day, eye roll. Yeah, don't do that. But if you're like me and you say it and you mean it with a smile in your voice, then go on, you do you. I think that's totally fine. Because just to throw it back at you, I could say the same thing with, are you all right? Or you all right? When I walk into a shop in Britain and I'm looking to buy something and the person working in the shop says to me, you all right? They don't really care if I'm all right. They don't care about the state of my mental or physical health and they're not inquiring in such a way that they want an answer. Oi, my rheumatism is, is flaring up something horrible today. They don't wanna know that. They just want to know, may I help you? Which is what Americans say when you walk into a store. If they approach you in an American store when you walk in, they're going to say, may I help you? Can I help you find anything? Are you looking for anything today? They say what they mean, but I'm not going to attack those people in Britain who say, are you all right? Because it is a cultural norm. They have the best of intentions. They're doing it to be nice. And so I have learned to say, yes, I'm all right. And can you help me find the erasable markers, please? <laughs> I just let them know what I'm looking for after acknowledging the fact that they're asking you're all right when they don't really care how I am. Group three is overused words. This is something that does bug British people. And it bugs Americans too. I just think it's different words that bug us. One thing that grates the gears of British people is when Americans say the word awesome all the time. I am so guilty of this. <laughs> and I think that a lot of people who are just positive, upbeat people who are trying to be nice will say awesome. It's just a word that we grow up saying in a supportive kind of way and the same way we say, good job. Uh, you know, a British person might say, well done. We say that too in the States. I think these are all good things. So if you are a British person who's bugged by Americans saying awesome too often, I would implore you to just find it within your fuzzy little heart to be okay with that. There are a lot of things to hate in the world. Go hate on people who are littering or hurting animals and <laughs> don't give people grief who are saying awesome. There are also some phrases that have come up recently among younger Americans that are just said all the time. Like whenever someone's excited about something, they'll say, let's go. I, I think that's just, again, a positive, enthusiastic phrase, and it's gonna bug some British people, but they need to just 
chill a little bit, I think. I think I've heard British people say things like, get in or get it or something like that. It means the same thing. So when we're being enthusiastic and positive, let's just all be a little more tolerant of how we express it on either side of the pond, please. <laughs> Speaking of overused words by Americans, this is another thing I was sternly scolded about when I started my channel four years ago. I mean, right out of the gates. I was talking about something, I don't know what it was, and I'm not sure I even really said it, but this British person said, hey, don't call British villages cute or quaint or red phone boxes cute or quaint. They just found that hugely disrespectful and inappropriate. So while honestly, I think that is an overreaction, I do try to veer away from saying that. I mean, it would be the most natural thing in the world for me to be walking around a little Cotswold village, or I just last week did my video on Chittingstone in, um, in Kent. That was a way cute village, but I didn't say it. I don't say cute, I don't say quaint. I come up with other words, picturesque, lovely, beautiful. And as, a, as the words are about to come out of my mouth, as I'm walking around vlogging and extemporaneously saying stuff off the cuff, I edit myself constantly just to try to not invoke the ire of the British people watching my videos that I called one of their 400 year old villages cute. But I also hope that those of you who are British and who watch other travel vloggers from the States who say things are cute and quaint, it's gonna happen all the time. But again, they don't mean it disrespectfully. So try to take it in the spirit in which it's intended. They love it. They think it's beautiful. They think it's awesome. <laughs> and mostly they think it's really different than what things are like where they come from. And they're appreciating that difference. So now I have to get to the phrase that Choppy from Whitehaven brought up and has asked me about again and again, saying, please film this video. He can't stand it when Americans use the phrase bad boys and specifically referring to food that they're going to eat. <laughs> I'm not sure, Choppy, why does this bug you? Does it sound like cannibalism that we're eating bad boys? But um, the funny thing is, I was talking to Ian about that and he's, and he said, I don't think I say that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't either. But then sure enough, I was filming some video and I caught myself about to say, yeah, and then you just take these bad boys and put some butter on them. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I guess it is something we Americans do, say bad boys when referring to food. So for the sake of Choppy's sanity, I will try to refrain from calling food, bad boys. But I think the rest of us Americans, I really can't uh, do anything about them. Okay, here's another word that came up a lot in the comments on that community post, and it's the word y'all. Okay, y'all, I live in Texas. I have lived here for 30 years or so, and y'all is a wonderful word. It's a way of saying you in the plural, the same way, and, and English is just limiting, right? Because you singular and you plural is just you. It's not like in I mean, Spanish, where it's usted and ustedes, where you can you know, immediately tell whether it's one person or multiple persons. So I think the word y'all is kind of great. Now, is it colloquial? Yes. Would I say it if I were giving a presentation to a CEO of a company? No, unless maybe the company were in Texas. But I do really like saying y'all, and I apologize if you're British and that bugs you, but how about we work out this as a compromise? When I'm filming in Texas, I'm allowed to say y'all, and when I'm in Britain, I will try and refrain. Deal? And now for group four, grammar mistakes. I can understand this being irritating, I'm irritated by grammar mistakes too. And there are some that we as Americans for sure have a big problem with and they bug me as well. Although I think there are some grammar mistakes that 
British people think our grammar or word mistakes were actually both versions are correct and one is used in the US and one is used in the UK. So let's talk about some examples. My first thing that I'll bring up that bugs me is when people say of when they mean have. For example, I would have done that as well instead of I would have done that as well. It's people listening to how we say, I would have done that. And when Americans say that, we will say it quickly and just kind of slur over that have word and like, yeah, I would have done that as well. Or, or saying it in the contraction form, would have done that. And then that's morphed into people writing and saying, I would have done that. No, 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 people. <laughs> It's not of, it's have. So that's a boo-boo that I think we as Americans need to be a little more careful with. Another one, and this came up a lot in the comments, is I could care less. And I just wanna go on record in this video saying that that is not an American way of saying I couldn't care less. That is just people being a little lazy or uninformed or misinformed and thinking that that's the correct phrase. It's not. It is not just an American correct way of saying I couldn't care less to say I could care less. No, it's just wrong. <laughs> when you cannot possibly care less about this, you should say I couldn't care less. Don't say I could care less. It's not correct. Here's one that someone mentioned that I have absolutely no awareness of, and it's the difference between bring and take. So for example, we should not say, I'm going to bring them flowers in the hospital. We should say, I'm going to take them flowers in the hospital. I'm really not sensitive to that one, and I would probably make that mistake myself. Is it something that Americans do and Britons don't? Probably. <laughs> probably one of those things that we should learn the correct way to say it and do a little bit better job. And here's another one that I was surprised by, dove. Saying dove as the past participle of dive. I just went and dove in the pool because it was a hot day. Instead of saying, I went and dived into the pool immediately. Americans definitely say dove. I don't know if it's wrong. I didn't research it before I filmed the video. So, oh my goodness, I'm in grammar overload right now. Let's move on to the next topic. I don't know that this is really a grammar mistake. I think it's more a terminology mistake. But in addition to the thing I talked about in my very first video on the channel, which is the difference between England, Great Britain, the UK, and how Americans do use those phrases incorrectly all the time, this is a, a permutation of that, which is referring to the monarch and saying the Queen of England, the King of England. I think what's confusing to us I've just been sitting here editing videos about Henry VIII and his wives for weeks. And when referring to that time period, it was kings and queens of England. Now, Charles III is king of the United Kingdom. He's not just the king of England. And yes, we Americans are probably gonna make that mistake all the time, but we should probably work on doing better about that. Group five is words that are not words. I first encountered this one during the pandemic when we were saying all the time, we're going through this lockdown and there's just no sense of normalcy anymore. When are we going to return to some kind of normalcy? That is the American word. I understand it to be a correct word, but to Britons, it is not correct. It's wildly incorrect and wrong and irritating because they say normality. I don't know why those words are different, but I do think Americans are correct to say normalcy. It's just a different word that we use for the same thing for some reason. I think we also do this with izing things, burglarize, hospitalize, Apparently, from the comments that I had on that post, that's not what Britons say for those words. You don't say burglarize, you don't say hospitalize. Let me know if you're British, your thoughts on that. Do you think those are words? Do you use them? Does it sound weird or infuriating to you when Americans use them? And going back to monarchs, 
Another term is coronated. So the king was recently crowned, but some Americans would say the king was coronated. Now, some people think that's wrong. It's an incorrect word. I actually did look that one up before filming the video. And according to my sources, coronated is a word and it has been since the 17th century. So I don't think we're wrong, but I don't know if both of those words are equally correct to use in that way. Here's another one I had no awareness of and it's garnishing someone's wages rather than garnering their wages. I think that's something that we just say differently on both on either side of the pond. I don't know why, but we definitely say if he's not paying child support, we're going to garnish his wages. And I think in Britain, they say garnering. Again, no idea why they're different, but I do think that's an example of us just using different words where to Britons, they think we're incorrect when we say it the American way. And lastly, this is one I've been criticized about on my channel because I say this all the time. I say a bunch of. I have a bunch of ideas. There were a bunch of flowers there. I'm going to go to a bunch of villages on this trip. I say bunch of all the time. And apparently that bugs some British people because they would say loads and they would like me to say loads as well. I'll try saying loads more, but I'm probably going to say a bunch of a bunch of times as well because it's just a habit. Group six is things that are just different. There are a lot of phrases that Britons say that Americans don't say at all. And I love a lot of those phrases and that's why I did my video favorite British sayings, which then spawned some merch ideas because I loved some of these phrases so much from little cotton socks and mustn't grumble and mad as a box of frogs. So I had to put them on some merchandise along with some sayings that I just, you know, words to live by. Butter makes everything better. But there are just an infinite number of small phrases that I notice since I live on both sides of the pond at different times of the year. I notice little things that are just different. Like a British person will say, that job needs doing. And an American would say, that job needs to be done. I don't know why we say that differently. And I don't know that a lot of people would notice that one, but yeah, I just notice all these little things all the time that are part of everyday language. What British people seem to have more as lightning rod issues are the things we say differently like aluminum and aluminium, math instead of maths, candy instead of sweets, dessert instead of pudding, appetizers instead of starters, entrees instead of mains. A lot of these things have to do with food, don't they? Um, and, and yes, like I said earlier, there are an infinite number of words that we say differently because there's just different terms on either side of the pond. But all those that I just mentioned are ones that I've heard British people complain about. So they're okay with us saying some words differently, but those ones really bug them. And I don't know why, but we are going to say things differently. I'm going to say goosebumps. You're going to say goose pimples. I don't think you can argue goose pimples is better. I think pimples actually sounds a little bit gross. I think <laughs> goosebumps sounds a lot better, but it's like arguing over ladybug versus ladybird. I mean, they're both nice terms. Let's not argue over these cute little red bugs with black spots. I think we just need to be a little more tolerant of one another and embrace those differences. Don't be upset because we call it a faucet instead of a tap or a sink instead of a basin. It's the same thing. Hopefully you know what we're talking about. That's the way we were taught to say it and we've grown up our whole lives saying it and it's correct in the US. So let's not argue over it. We've got bigger fish to fry. There are some phrases that Americans have started saying that I think are a little more recent that do bug Britons, in addition to the, the bad boys one I talked about earlier, there's things like, I'd like to speak to that, instead of I'd like to talk about that, or I'd like to address that. In the younger generation, people, instead of saying, oh, 
I did that wrong. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. They will say, my bad. That's probably something that really bugs a lot of Britons and older Americans, but I think that saying is kind of here to stay, along with saying, I'm going to reach out to them about that. That's a business thing. Just like I'd like to speak to that, I'm going to reach out about that, I'll ping him. It's just business terminology that's used in the modern day, and I'm not sure there's any going back from those. Just like apparently it's irksome that we Americans say going forward instead of in the future. There are just little nuances to our language that have evolved over time and Americans have no clue that those things are different than how they're said across the pond, I think 99% of the time. But to wrap up this video on a lighthearted note in the spirit of Michael McIntyre, I'd like to talk about a few things that we Americans say the long way that there's no awareness whatsoever that British people say it differently and that it's weird the way we say it. And that is horseback riding. We always say horseback riding. No idea that British people just say horse riding and that we sound silly that we're specifying the area of a horse on which one is supposed to ride as if it weren't obvious. Just like we say eyeglasses for spectacles when it's pretty obvious that glasses are to be worn over one's eyes. And we say waste paper basket instead of bin, which is way more syllables. Although I think waste paper basket is Michael McIntyre, a bit of a archaic way of us saying trash or garbage, but it's still funny nonetheless. So let's just have a little bit more of a lighthearted attitude toward our many differences, embrace and appreciate these differences and tolerate one another in all of our quirky ways. Please let me know your thoughts on these differences. What surprised you? Did you learn anything new? And if you want to tell additional things that bug you that Americans say and do, go ahead, tell us in the comments, but please don't hate us because we're pretty cute and quaint people. And there are a bunch of us. So you should learn to love us, y'all. Thanks so much for watching this silly little video and do something good in the world today.